In this tutorial, I'll show you some different tools and options for how to smooth objects in Blender. So the first option is using the shade smooth in object mode. So if you just right click on an object, you can see there's shade flat, which is the default, but I can use shade smooth instead. So now you can see the object surface looks really smooth. Now this doesn't edit the topology. You can see if I hit tab to go into edit mode, the topology is still exactly the same, whether I am using the shade flat or the shade smooth. Now the shading smooth feature doesn't work well for very low poly objects like this cube because you can see the shading looks really weird. It kind of looks round, but then if you look on the edges, you can see it's still sharp. And there's also some weird dark areas. So the shade smooth feature works better for objects with higher topology. If I move the cube out of the way and instead add like a UV sphere, then I can just shade this smooth with the object context menu. You can see that looks a lot better now because it has a lot more topology. Now you might have also noticed that there is a shade auto smooth. So the shade auto smooth is going to shade the faces but only by a certain angle. So if I hit shift A for the add menu, I can go down here and add a cylinder. So if I were to shade this flat, that's the default, but you can see there's kind of these sharp faces here. Well, if I shade smooth, you can see it just kind of looks really weird because like right here, it kind of looks smooth and round. It almost looks circular, but then if you kind of look on the side, it's still sharp. And also there's kind of that weird darkening. Well, if I use the shade auto smooth, it's going to smooth the faces which are at a small angle. So this angle here, this is a 90 degree angle, so it's going to be much sharper. But then this face here, like these faces going all the way around, they have a very small angle, so it's going to shade them smooth. And how you can change the angle is by opening up the side panel and going here to the modifiers. And if you select the object with the shade auto smooth, there is the smooth by angle. So it's actually adding a modifier. And there's the angle here. So you can see if I turn the angle really far down, you can see if the angle is at zero, then everything looks like it's shaded flat so there isn't any smoothing but as I turn the angle up more and more anything which has an angle smaller than that is going to start to be shaded smooth so you can see with this cylinder once I get past around like 12 you can see this is shaded smooth now if I were to turn this to like 89 degrees 89 you can see it looks exactly the same however if I were to turn this a little past 90 or just turn it to 90 now you can see it's shaded smooth so the entire thing is smooth and that's because this angle here is 90 degrees so if I turn this up to like a 91 91 now you can see the entire thing looks smooth so that is the difference between the shade flat auto smooth and smooth now the next way to smooth objects is using the smooth tool in edit mode. So if I go to the add menu, I can just add a monkey head and I'm going to go into edit mode. And then I am going to turn on the gizmos by clicking on this little button here. And then I'll hit the T key to open up the side panel. And let's just drag this out to make it bigger. And I can scroll down and you can see right above me, there is actually a smooth tool. And so if you have the gizmo turned on and you select an object in edit mode, you can see I can start to drag the gizmo and it's going to start to smooth everything out. So so I can smooth that out and now you can see the monkey head looks a lot more smooth and then for example if I wanted to I could also use like the shade smooth but I'm going to hit Control Z to bring it back to how it was now if you don't want to use this side panel here and you want to use the shortcut key instead I'll just close the side panel and hide the gizmo so if you select the mesh in edit mode you can press Control V and Control V is going to bring up vertex settings so I can now just go down here and click on smooth vertices and you can see it just did it once but then right behind me I can just open up the smooth vertices settings and I can change the smoothness value so I can just turn this up and down and there's also a repeat so if you do this more and more it's going to basically repeat the amount of smoothing so I can just have it maybe smooth just a little bit but then I can repeat it many times or I could turn the repeat down but then smooth up a lot so it just kind of depends on what works well for you now there's also the x-axis the y-axis and the z-axis so if you just want to smooth it by a certain axis you could just choose one of them but in this case I want it to be smooth all the way around so I'll just turn on all of them now this smooth option doesn't work well for very low poly meshes. So for example, if I add a cube, go into edit mode and then hit control V for vertex settings and I can smooth the vertices, you can see it kind of just made it really small. And so it's like disappeared and I can try to like change the smoothing, but you can see it's basically smoothing it and bringing each vertex in, but there isn't really enough topology. So it just doesn't really work that well. If I were to use the object context menu in edit mode and subdivide it a few times, Let's just subdivide a few times. Now I can hit control V and I can use the smooth vertices. Now you can see it's going to be much more round. And if I continue to turn up the smoothing and repeat it, you can see it's kind of becoming more like a ball shape because it actually has more topology to round it out. Now the next tool for smoothing objects is using the smooth brush in Blender sculpt mode. So I'm going to click here to go to the sculpting workspace and I have a monkey head selected. So that's going to take me over to sculpt mode of the object. 
So then what I wanna do is find the smooth brush. Now I've just created a new window here so I can have the brushes on this side, but you're going to see the brushes right down here because that's the default. Well, if you press the S key, that's gonna take you to the smooth brush. And then what I can also do is turn up the size here of the brush and turn up the strength. So now you can see I can just click along here, or if you have a drawing tablet, you can use a drawing tablet, and you can see it's gonna smooth things out. Now, it doesn't work really well for very low poly objects like this, because you can see it's kind of like quickly moving it around, and it's not really that smooth, even though I am smoothing it out. And it would be even worse if I were using a cube. So if I just go to the Add menu and add a cube, go back to the sculpting workspace. If I tried to smooth this out, you can see it's just kind of like moving around the vertices because in sculpt mode, you move around each vertex. So it works better if you have a more high poly object. So I'm gonna go back to the layout and I'm gonna select everything and I'm just gonna delete everything. I'll go to the add menu and I'll add a new cube. And then I can go back to sculpt mode. So in this case, I'd want a more high poly object. And an easy way to do that is to use the remesh in sculpt mode. So to use the remesh, you can first press the R key so the R key is going to change the size of the remesh so I can make it bigger and smaller and then I can just click there. So that grid there is going to be the size of the faces. Then I can press Control R and Control R is going to remesh it. So it remeshed it and it pretty much looks the same but if I go into wireframe you can see it's actually very detailed. So now using the smooth brush you can click down here or press the S key. I can now go along here and I can start to smooth this out. So now you can see we can make a nice really smooth cube just by smoothing those edges. And I can also smooth this here if I want to. So the next tool for smoothing objects is to use the bevel. So if I just go to the add menu, I'm gonna add a new cube and we'll go into edit mode. And then what I can do is just select an edge. So I'm gonna click up here to go to the edge select and then I'll just select this edge. So what I can do to use the bevel is press Control B. So Control B is the shortcut to add a bevel, and then I can also scroll my mouse wheel, and if I scroll my mouse wheel, it's gonna add more cuts in the bevel. And then when I click to let go of the bevel, you can see right behind me, there's actually some bevel settings, so I could change like the width of it, I can also change the segments, so that's a way to smooth out one single edge. I can also hit Control Z to undo that, and I can instead select everything in edit mode, and I can press Control B. So if I press Control B with everything selected, you can see it's gonna add bevel to everything. And so I can make this nice and smooth so I could just have like a small bevel or a large bevel. So now you can see we have a cube but it has nice round edges. Now if I just delete this object, let's instead add like a monkey head and I'll go into edit mode, select everything, and I can hit control B. So in this case, adding it to a very high poly object or a pretty detailed object isn't really going to work that well. Now if I go back to object mode, you can see it didn't really smooth out the monkey because there's still like that big face there and then that face there. So it just smooths out the edges. It is really good though for more low poly objects like a cube like I just showed you. It's also really helpful for a cylinder. So if I delete this mesh, let's go to the add menu and let's just add a cylinder. So let's say that I just wanted to smooth out or round out the edge of the cylinder. Well if I go into edit mode, I can go to the face select and just select this face or I could also use the edge select. And then you can use the shortcut, which is Control B. And you can see I can just scroll my mouse wheel and I can also change the size of it, place that there. And then back in object mode, I'll just shade this smooth. And now you can see the top there of the cylinder is nice and round. Now the next tool for smoothing objects is similar to the bevel and that is the bevel modifier. So with the bevel modifier, it's basically a non-destructive workflow because if you add a modifier, that's actually not going to affect the actual geometry. So to show you this, if I go over here to the modifiers, I can click on add modifier and I can search for the bevel modifier. Now you can see it looks like it edited the mesh, but if I hit tab to go into edit mode, you can see the mesh is still using its original mesh. So I can change like the amount of the bevel, I can turn up the segments. So this is considered like a non-destructive workflow because even though we added a bevel to this, it's not actually affecting the geometry. However, if I clicked on the drop down arrow and clicked on the apply button, now if I go into edit mode, you can see it actually affected the mesh. But I'll just hit control Z to undo that just so we have the bevel modifier back. So the bevel modifier is super useful because you can change the amount and you can also change the segments. And then if you remember earlier in the video, I talked about the shade auto smooth. And so the shade auto smooth is going to smooth the faces if they're at a certain angle. Well, with the bevel modifier, it also has a limit method, which is similar. So basically it's only going to add a bevel to edges which have a certain angle. So if I take the angle here and turn it all the way down to zero, you can see now it's going to actually add a bevel to every single edge here. And so let's just turn this 
segments down so you can actually kind of see what it's doing. So you can see it's adding bevels here to every single edge, and so that looks really weird. There's kind of like some triangle faces here and stuff, and I really don't need it to be like that because I actually only want to add a bevel to this top here. So instead of the angle being zero, I can turn it up more and more, and you can see once it gets like around 11 or 12, you can see now there's no bevel right here on these edges. There's only a bevel on this edge. However, if I turn the angle up past 90, let's turn it to like 89. You can see it looks the same, but then if I turn it past 90, so like 91, you can see now there's no bevel because this is a 90 degree angle, but we set the angle to 91. So if I just turn it under 90, now it's gonna add a bevel just to the top. So the next common way to smooth objects is using the subdivision surface modifier, and this is probably the most common way that you'll smooth objects. So if I have a complex object like this and I have all these sharp angles and things, I just wanna maybe smooth everything out and just make it nice and smooth. I don't wanna have to worry about bevels or you know manually smoothing it with sculpt mode. I just want Blender to automatically smooth out all the edges. Well, if I click here on add modifier, I can type SUB and I can add subdivision surface. And then also if I want to, I can shade it smooth with the object context menu. So you can see the subdivision, here it is off and here it is on. It's going to just look at every single edge and smooth out every single edge. So it's going to look at like kind of this edge here and this angle here, smooth that out. So that's why this looks nice and round. And then also like right here, it's a little bit more flat because these angles are a bit more flat. Now you can see on the subdivision, there is a levels viewport and a levels render. And why you might want these to be different is because let's say I turn up the viewport really high, that's gonna actually start to lag the scene. So if I try to like go into edit mode and do things, you can see it's actually really laggy. And so that's because it's adding so much subdivision. So basically what happens when I add the subdivision surface is it subdivides the mesh so it adds more faces inside the faces and then it smooths out those faces so if i click on the drop down arrow and apply the subdivision now if i go into edit mode you can see it's very laggy and you can see it's a super super detailed mesh because it has so many faces so that's how it's smoothing it out i'm going to hit Control z to undo that so why you might want to have a difference between the viewport and render is because maybe you don't want to lag the scene too much so i could keep the viewport maybe at just a one but then i could have it render at maybe like a two or three so this way in the viewport the viewport is nice and fast because it only has one but then when it actually does the render it's going to render with three so if you kind of look here on the edges you can see it does look slightly sharp there so it would actually render with a level of three which is much smoother now another tool for smoothing out meshes is the geometry nodes. So if I go to the add menu, I'm just going to add a cube and then I'm on the geometry nodes workspace. So I'm just gonna add new geometry nodes. So there is a really useful node for smoothing objects and that is the subdivision surface. So you can see I can add the subdivision surface and put this in between the input and the output. So this acts very similar to the subdivision surface modifier, but one thing which is really useful about this is that there is an edge crease. So if I turn up this edge crease, you can see now it looks like a cube again, but just the edges are rounded. So you can do that if you have like a low poly object and you wanna just make the edges a bit more sharp. Or if I like turn this down, you can see now the cube looks more like a sphere. And then in this case, you can just use the object context menu and shade it smooth. But in the geometry nodes, there's also a set shade smooth node. So I can add set shade smooth and I can just drop it right here. And so that is a node which is going to actually shade your object smooth, similar to using the shade smooth with the object context menu. So that's another way to smooth your mesh. So the last tool that I'm gonna talk about for smoothing objects is using the smooth modifier. So if I click on add modifier, I can type in smooth and you can see there is a smooth modifier. So the smooth modifier is pretty similar to the other tool where if I go into edit mode and select everything and press control V, I can choose to smooth the vertices. This smooth modifier is pretty similar. So you can see there's a factor which I can turn up and down and then I can also repeat it. So I can like, maybe just turn the factor to a small value, and then I can just repeat it again and again, and this way I have very fine control over how I wanna smooth it. You can see if I turn the factor up too much and make it too strong, eventually the mesh is gonna like overlap itself. You can see now the mesh is like coming inside out and it's kind of overlapping and intersecting with itself. So you don't wanna turn it up too high, but just turning up a little bit, you can smooth the objects. That looks very weird. So another very useful modifier. Now you can see I also have the X, Y, and Z axis. So if I just wanna smooth it like up and down, I could just use the Z axis. Most of the time though, you're probably just gonna to wanna to use the X, Y, and Z axis. So that's another very useful way to smooth objects by using the smooth modifier.
So those are some different methods for smoothing objects in Blender. So I hope you found this tutorial helpful and thank you for watching. Now if you'd like to learn much more about 3D modeling, then I also recently released a 3D modeling for beginners tutorial where I go over many tools and workflows and shortcuts of 3D modeling. So you can definitely check out that video linked in the description. And then we did also talk about some modifiers in this video, but if you'd like to learn about all the basic modifiers in Blender, then I also have a modifiers for beginners tutorial, which you can check out where I cover many more modifiers. And if you enjoy my tutorials and you'd like to help support me and this channel, then some great ways to do that are by checking out my Gumroad store and my Patreon page. So on my Patreon page, you can join a monthly membership, so you'll be supporting the channel monthly, and you'll get access to lots of Blender content, like 3D models and assets, tutorial files, artwork project files, procedural materials, geometry node modifier setups, and lots more content on my Patreon page. Or if you'd like to make a one-time purchase of one of my products, you can check out my Gumroad store where I also have the same content for a one-time purchase. So thank you everyone so much for your support. So I hope you found the video helpful and thank you for watching.